I try to speak with too much emotion and passion. So you should curb that, curb me down, and uh, I should not take more than the fifteen minutes. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Give more time to both. You are speaking to me, speech. sir. You, you are, you are full of knowledge. So you wanted to give it to the others. So yes. thank it is you. Obvious. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, really. And this is a. And can I tell you, compartmentation, nineteen seventy version was very poor. Eighty-three version was a reasonably yeah. good. But two thousand five version was a large leap forward. But two thousand sixteen version has really taken it to some real good. Uh, Uh, this is forward it's good yes but the issue is certifying agency the trained personnel i am touching i am touching yeah, on that yeah, yeah. i am touching on that i am touching on two things the process of uh, compliance and uh, how do you do at the physical planning level and uh, between the architects uh, engineers and the mep of fire protection engineers how do you ensure because if it is not a physical wall being separation what is the way by you are doing over there is a very important component so how do you do the particular thing of alternative to physical compartmentation physical to theek hai deewar to ho jayega 120 minutes ka fire resistance hoga all those details will yeah, be there yeah. but otherwise what all things to be done and how do you do the curtains and all the particular fire curtains and all those details especially parking area because very very important yes We are on dot sir. Oh, we are one twenty one. Yeah, it's eleven o'clock now, so one twenty five, one twenty seven. Eleven o eleven o eleven one. Should yeah. we wait for two minutes? It's one twenty eight now. Raman Kapoor has commented. Ah, he is into that fire curtain and smoke curtain. Ah, ah, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm very briefly making a mention on differentiation between fire curtain and smoke curtain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Our project came up with fire smoke. Our curtain project create smoke reservoirs to for smoke mitigation. And we are covered in uh, the NBC for the escalators. The smoke curtain is already. Provided there, yes. figure three, figure three of NBC covers that detail. Yes, yes, yes. I'm showing that yes. figure. Oh, wonderful, great. Yeah, real yeah. good tal mail. You know what is good is all the three of us have independently made the presentation independently, not even consulted with each other. But finally, what is coming is a beautiful amalgam. True. One fifty two. Yes, sir. I think uh, we should. Uh, uh, Start without much uh, delay. Yeah. Yes. Dominic, all the best. Start. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all of uh, all of you here. Uh, it's a wonderful morning. And uh, today's topic, the compartmentation of space, and our focus is on uh, National Building Code 2060. so the fire prevention and protection focus is shifting from active passive fire protection so passive fire protection is in the radar by in in many ways by the builder by the architect by the consultant so compartmentation is a crucial important aspect of any effective fire safety strategy in fact these benefits have today become necessity in buildings it involves the divisions of larger space into smaller space spaces in the event of fire the spread of fire and smoke can be restricted and even controlled by subdividing the areas up into various fire compartments 
So compartmentation unsurprisingly brings with many safety benefits. In fact, these benefits have today become necessity again. So I am proudly will present you the wonderful speaker today. We have the keynote speaker, Mr. Vasudev Suresh, who's more known as V. Suresh. He's a civil engineer from Anna University with over 53 years of professional experience in the housing, infrastructure, rural and urban development and built environment sector. He has worked in Tamil Nadu PWD for one and a half years and he moved to BAS, Bureau of Indian Standard for 12 and a half years and was directly associated with formulation of leading national standards and codes and national building codes and is now the vice chairman of national building code selection committee and chairman housing planning and prefabricated construction section committee of BAS. Is a former chairman and managing director of housing and urban development corporation known as HUDCO and is a current chairman of Indian Green Building Council, IGBC, and the vice chairman of NBC. He has received 15 distinguished awards for recognition of his work, few to mention, best chief executive of the year by National Foundation of Indian. Uh, I forgot that. IAM Millennium of Top CEO Award for Excellence, Man of the Decade, Habitat, the International Award from Vistex Foundation to 2000, Griha Nirman Maharishi Award, Eminent Engineer Award, Architectural Engineering Award, Engineer of the Year by the Engineers India, Industry Dawn and Outstanding Contribution to Real Estate Development Award by CWI in 2013. Mr. V. Suresh, the most vibrant, most knowledgeable, most humble person that I have come across in my 33 years of in the, in the fire industry. He never said no to any of our requests, but anything related to safety he is the first person to come forward. I have seen him in attending many various seminars in the FSA. He'll be the first man to come on time and he occupied the first bench of the seminar. Even though he's just young, 70 plus, he's still hungry for knowledge. I welcome our keynote speaker, V. Vasudevan, sir. A very happy good morning, Dominic. Thank you very much for the good introduction. And to my fellow panelists, very distinguished fellow panelists, Santosh Variksa, as well as Prasanna Kumarji, both of them being experts in their own area. My keynote that I'm going to present would give you a small bird's eye view on some of the major issues on this very critical topic we have uh, identified and uh, uh, really congratulate uh, Dominic for having identified this topic. Very rarely this is being coming up in national seminars. And to me, this is one of the most important uh, component because the whole issue of compartmentalization is a very vital part of the fire safety uh, in the, the design of a building and seeks to divide larger spaces into smaller, more manageable ones should a fire occur. Very simply put, this is the whole idea of the particular thing. And fire compartment is also used to create safe, protected means of escape for the building occupants also. And compartmentation is therefore the most important aspect in designing safe building, as rightly Dominic said, through passive fire protection. Even though the word passive word is coming over there, the one which can create the compartment level sometimes can be passive through walls or also through active methodologies through the various other methods in case larger space, you can't have physical barriers coming on that. And therefore, uh, the whole subject of compartment within a building is to contain, limit, and spread, uh, spread of fire and smoke. And in its design of the buildings at the level of architects, physical planning of the building, spatial planning of the building, and the engineers who are civil engineers who are working along with this has to ensure there is no spread of fire to adjacent areas, including through leakages and openings through ducts. You will very shortly know horizontal compartmentation and vertical compartmentalization will shortly 
come over there, uh, openings, etc. And the National Building Code of India, uh, which is actually the most important guiding document in this particular area, literally a uh, mandatory document by all fire protection agencies, even though there's a recommendatory document. Otherwise, the NBC part for us uh, really uh, got the right level of acceptance by the industry, as well as by the regulators, fire service and rescue service team members, and even municipal corporation and municipalities. And the court really requires compartmentalization of uh, the uh, floor areas uh, in various phases into a certain amount of limited one with an approach to control, as I said, the spread of fire to avoid the entire floor plate, uh, floor plate being gutted in fire, which will pose challenges to defend in place and also compromise the property protection if the beyond a certain area. I'll tell about the area in a minute. And for me, compartmentalization is allowed as a wonderful fire barrier. It gives an opportunity to design to use wall and other elements as fire resistance rating, which will help create compartment to contain the fire during the fire distress. And as any compartment is planned, each of the compartments should have its planned exit also equally important because you got to get out of this into a way of safe exits. And therefore, design of the compartment also should have as a component access towards the exits now, either one directly or through another access which can come into a large way. And therefore, we should also uh, have this component where some of the things on compartment issues related to the exits and related one also becomes an important component, even though not the main component that's coming in this particular uh, sector. And uh, in this context, uh, the major issue that comes into everybody's mind are the issues on passive fire protection, what all needs to be done. That we can compartmentalize a particular thing and use the fire resistance, resistant rated walls as well as the floors. A compartment is always from the floor level up to the ceiling level. So therefore, you're able to hold the particular space into a, a large one. And when you have horizontal compartmentalization, is compartmentalizing the floor or the building into smaller spaces. And so that it will be able to ensure that uh, the spread doesn't take place horizontally of fire or the smoke into a large way. And other areas which can, uh, which uh, this can happen is obviously space around electrical cables, conduits passing through the common wall. It can be at the, at the uh, within the same compartment can come on the wall or it can go from one floor to another through the roofs, etc. I'm sure our distinguished speakers will open out on each of this in with minute detail. So these openings have, can be a very major concern area. They require you rightly sealed through appropriate mechanism, which are physical as well as other methodologies there. We have to also keep the uh, aspect in a very large way. Equally important component is the centrally air-conditioned buildings, the AHU rooms, etc. So more than one floor. As far as possible, our idea is to see that each one of them serve only one floor, AHU per floor. That's increasingly coming into a large way. And it is the right time for me to talk about what is the present National Building Code part for the fire and life safety component comes over there. I would say uh, international document wise, the NSPA document, the PIS document, other document like Singapore Code, Shanghai Code, etc. Our National Building Code part four is one of the finest treatise on this particular subject. Personally, seeing the first version of 1970, 83 version, 2005 version, 2016 version, really is a state-of-the-art knowledge on the subject and India can be very proud of that particular thing. We have put, at this particular point of time, the minimum area of one compartment to about 750 square meters, and uh, we can have anything beyond that, we can have a second compartment coming on this particular side, and then the fire resistance rating of that particular compartment's wall should be a minimum of two hours or 120 minutes. So what is that particular uh, medium by which I'll get that 120 minutes, uh, minutes of fire resistance are issues I'm sure our distinguished speakers will open out into minute detail and that's an important component and the code further opens out it has a large amount of uses coming over there as you are aware A to J is coming there but I think most important area is for example basements are a concern area basements with car parking Basements other than car parking, you know, both cases. So basements with car parking, we can have 3,000 square meters of compartment coming. Basements without car parking, uh, we have 2,000 square meters over there. Hospitals are very important. These days, very important. Amri Hospital, we have paid the price. So many hospital fires, 
we have paid the price on that. Not more than 1,800 square meters is the limit for that. And uh, the institutional buildings, which are where the physical movement of the people are going to be restricted, and that particular one is about 1,125 square meter. Mercantile building, which will have all your uh, malls and all that. Today morning, we had a fire in uh, Bombay in one of the leading malls. 18 fire uh, fighting uh, equipments are trying to fight the fire. I really can't, don't know how it started, but shopping malls are an important component, which also has to be there for retail spaces. There, the limit of the space is 2,000 square meter. Assembly buildings are large people congregate at a time. Evacuation, there is the load is not, but people's evacuation is very important. Is 2000 square. Only business buildings or office buildings, which are larger office spaces, which are or bank spaces, or uh, corporate offices, all institutions, that's the highest one of 3000 square meters. So your differentiated scale of 1125 square meters, 2800 square meter, 2000 square meter, 3000 square meter, different areas of maximum size of compartment are available. So how do you create within that maximum area, these particular compartmental spaces are a very important component. And we, and we also have to particularly be worried about the basement as an important component. All modern buildings do provide two, three or four basements, both permits that particular one, and we would like to have effective compartmentalization coming in this particular area. And we should also have distinct air intake and air exhaust system. I'm sure uh, one of the speakers will open out on that. How do you make that happen over there for, uh, for different particular areas uh, of the uh, basement, including separate fire protection systems uh, for that particular area of the basement also requires to be done in those uh, uh, components uh, area, especially basement parking in detail, NBC covers in very minute detail. Compartmentation can be done either through a fire barrier or using water uh, nozzle, K23 sprinklers, we call it, very popularly known as K23 sprinklers, or a combination of both of them. Automatic deluge system and deluge wall, piping and nozzle are required for the water curtain system and it's used to make a virtual compartment. The additional, you get additional amount of water for fire in respect of the basement related fire. And that particular thing should be uh, able to cater for about 60 minutes of functioning and the largest compartment perimeter at one point, only one compartment will be there. And therefore these details are covered in the NBC very thoroughly. I would uh, advise everybody to go through the document in very minute detail. And therefore water is exclusively for basement for water curtain system, having necessary pump and piping system. That's sprinkler based compartmentation, whether we can do that, but that's slightly costlier affair. Other methodologies are also equally there. So this requirement has got to be known. Equally, another important component is of metro stations and other related one, compartmentation becomes an important uh, area, which all of us have got to uh, keep in view in a very large way. Uh, I would also like to get into some of the areas which are uh, uh, very, very uh, important for all of us. And these particular issues relates, relates to the uh, uh, way in which uh, the, uh, if it is not physical, what are other options available? And those options uh, which are available has got to be kept in the fire curtains that should be there, separate that from the smoke curtains and what are all the ways by which it can happen over there. And these are details available into the code over there and uh, uh, air curtain as well as the water curtains and this particular areas, how do we do that is uh, covered into the code in a very large way. Especially those buildings are higher story heights. I'm sure this is going to come over there, especially larger IT buildings over there, data centers coming over there. Uh, you will have uh, logistics buildings, higher story height, slightly tendency for industrial and other assembly buildings. When you have heights which are more than about four meters, what are the ways by which you will be able to clear the water spray curtain and other related uh, methodologies which are required to contain the fire and to create the actual compartmentation effect is another area uh, that will be uh, that will have to be uh, uh, worked out in detail. The spread of fire, uh, more than the fire, the smoke spread, which can go from a floor horizontally from one area to another, or between one floor to another, which can, through various situations, however much you take care, is also an area of concern to a large number of our buildings. I was just trying to uh, have a look at uh, some of the some of the buildings, some of the buildings where, like Siddharth Hotel Fire, Amri Hospital Fire, Upar Cinema Fire, Siddharth Hotel Fire, 
again ubha our vigyan bond fire other chandigarh semiconductor unit fire. in all these cases you will be surprised to know that we had a very major concern of the spread coming because the compartmentation component has been not taken into account the degree it is required which is now available state of the knowledge is available now had we had only only done that we should have had a much lesser impact of the fire spread into a very large way uh, these are details i'm sure our team will be getting into in uh, mind detail there's a big role for the designers of the building the architects and the Uh, civil engineers in the beginning stages or the particular one before the mepf consultants and the fire consultants come into a large way to give it a passive but active responses to deal with that particular compartmentation effect becomes an important uh, component and i would like to uh, play emphasis that each one of them should have very good exposure on this aspect on the compartment issues uh, which they can use it very comfortably and very conveniently with small tips of knowledge on this particular area the second major common knowledge i want to take a time because varik sahib is there he is also regulator he is the uh, head of the midc uh, fire he is also the director of the maharashtra fire service now very important each one of the state fire department require this particular plans to be approved they will also ensure that you have you created this compartments have you created the right level of uh, details to contain the fire so therefore what is the process under which the compliance and enforcement mechanism can takes place over there while the fire consultant will work along with the architect and the engineer for submitting the building plans for approval on behalf of a builder or a real estate developer or a corporate client etc etc you request somebody from the local body a municipal corporation or the noc from the fire department to go into that at the building permit stage secondly after the completion is over before you get the occupancy permit especially compartment comes into effect especially if you are going to have all the fire curtains coming you got to know they are operate or not operate etc becomes an important one the third level i want to take it forward is also what level of the building 2 years down the line 3 years down the line 4 years down the line npc provides for the renewal periodic renewal certificate the reason why you will understand the requirement if it is 3000 for one building And, or 2000 for one building you make that into something which around uh, uh, 3000 then your occupancy and the use changes and the requirements of this particular fire curtain which will become which are supposed to be done in lower space is completely stopped so you have to continuously see whether that they are not violated use occupancy and some of the requirements which are linked with that are taken into account number 2 the systems which are there to ensure that it works as a compartment is it functional or not functional the next major component will come this next one is the link towards the escape routes another one is also another aspect of testing therefore the issue of the renewal certificate how close you want it you want to do annual once in two years once in three years it all depends on mechanism and who will do that do you have just like your structural engineers to give stability certificate you are the electrical Uh, audit being done for the energy efficiency similarly on the fire audit or on fire uh, sufficiency can we get accredited uh, fire protection specialist to deal with this particular to give that but that becomes a very important tool which will help the enforcement mechanism it will also help the uh, architects engineers and the builders also to ensure so that's also an important component i'm left it towards the last part of my presentation my time is getting over i shouldn't uh, speak more uh i'm sure you will have uh, an array of two brilliant presentation coming from two of the outstanding practitioners in this particular area one who was in the government sector public sector and knows about all aspects of the uh, regulatory aspects and the other one a practitioner in terms of the designer input coming from the other side of the table and that will be a wonderful combination for all of us i want to thank you very much for the patient hearing i'm sure you will hear details of each one of the small small nuggets i gave in the very detailed presentation by our two distinguished uh, speakers thank you once again for all the wonderful audience i find we have about 234 people already gathered for this uh, uh, session on a saturday morning thank you very much thank you so much sir thank you wonderful wonderful opening remarks from uh, um, sir v suresh and he is going to continue with us and also i wish to participate in the question and answer so i will move on to the uh, speaker of the day mr santosh s varik he is a chief fire officer and fire advisor of midc fire service and director maharashtra fire 
is a science graduate and engineering graduate from National Fire Service College, Nagpur, an MBA in finance and a law graduate is also an advocate. He has 28 years, 28 years of experience in the field of fire prevention and protection. He has served on various positions in MIDC fire services. One of the architects in drafting the India's first Maharashtra Fire Act, which is the most stringent fire act that was introduced in India, and many, many other states followed that. An expert in firefighting and firefighting of various occupancies, implementation of fire prevention, life safety measure as per National Building Code of India. He has successfully handled various industrial projects, especially townships, SEZs, and IT parks in Maharashtra. I welcome Santosh Eswarik. Can you allow me to share the screen? Yes, sir. You can share now, sir. So today's a very important subject, fire compartmentation. Thank you, Dominic, for choosing this subject. And majority of the times this is very ignored subject as far as from the architect point of view and the fire services point of view also because uh, it is not planned at the initial stage unfortunately and afterwards when we wanted to create such type of compartmentation then it is a very costly affair so on this backdrop i just wanted to uh, go through the provisions various provisions of new nbc 2016 so we will go through the definition first, the compartmentation. The compartmentation is a space within the building, uh, which is the, covered with the fire barrier or fire resistance walls on all sides and including the flooring and the ceiling. So this is the definition given of compartmentation as per the terminologies given in 2.21 of part four of National Building Code 2005, uh, 2016. Then the fire barriers. The fire barrier is a vertical or horizontal aligned members such as wall or fire curtain or a floor. This may be discontinued after certain openings with a specified fire resistance rating. This fire resistance rating is very important which such members are designed and constructed with the specified fire resistance rating to limit the spread of fire that also restrict the moment of smoke. We know smoke is a major killer in case of fire. Due to actual fire, there are physical damages, but the life loss is majority due to the smoke. That is the carbon monoxide coming out of as a product of combustion. Then the fire resistance wall, next definition given, fire resistance rating wall having opening with specified fire resistance rating, which restrict the spread of fire from one part of the building to the another part uh, of the same building. So within building, if the side walls or external walls or internal partition walls are provided, that should have the sufficient fire rating of minimum 120 minutes or two hours. Then there is another component involved this time that is the smoke compartment. This was not there in 2005. That is the space within a building enclosed by the smoke barriers on all sides. But there is note below it that the compartmentation only speaks about the fire barriers and fire resistance and not about the smoke barriers. To explain more about the smoke compartmentation and barriers, this is the diagram provided in the uh, National Building Code Part 4, which encloses the uh, escalators in malls basically and in large hotels also you can find such type of arrangements wherein the smoke can travel vertically to any of the floor to the upper floors and you can have the secondary fires. To restrict this, this provision is made where you can have the smoke barriers along with the escalators or the open passages or the atriums. And you have a sprinkler system attached to along, uh, carry, carrying along with it, I mean provided along with it. So that in case of fire, the hot smoke will come up to the sprinklers and the sprinklers will get activated 
immediately and the smoke can be cooled down and the fire cannot be spread to the upper floors so that is the intent of this smoke compartmentation before going to the other the details we have to first understand the basic concept of any building any structure which is having uh, means uh, the load carrying capacity it should stand in case of fire for a longer time so that is the load bearing capacity or the capacity to withstand the fire in uh, 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 in a particular building then second is the integrity integrity of the uh, building components wherein if the fire is there in one compartment it should not pass through the fire to the adjoining compartment through the cracks or holes or whatever the openings are small openings are have made available in the particular wall so that is called the integrity of the uh, building second is the insulation so if the fire is there in one part so your adjacent compartmentation gets heated up and if any material is stored in adjoining compartment that also get uh, ignited so that is the insulation so three these qualities are very much important for any building so all uh, passive fire protection is revolving around these three principles that is the stability integrity and penetration uh, of the material so you can use different types of material that may be including wood also you can use or uh, machinery you can use uh, brick walls or uh, different types of material glass whatever it may be but they should have these three important characteristics then we will come to the concept of compartmentalization wherein any building having number of stories have the staircases lift lobbies then uh, passages and the storage areas or residential areas or shopping areas whatever it may be depending upon the occupancy of the building they are compartmentalized into small areas wherein if anything goes wrong in any of the compartment that will contained in that particular pocket itself so that whatever detection systems sprinkler systems are provided in that compartment that will come in picture uh, action and they will give you alarm sprinkler will come in operation and they will contain that fire in that particular compartment the fire will not uh, spread horizontally or vertically so this is the normal scenario happens in any of the fire where the compartmentation is not there in the origin of fire fire will start in one compartment and whatever the doors are if not fire rated the fire will travel through that doors to the adjoining compartment or the to the passages if the building is centralized air condition then through the ac ducts provided in the building or through the false ceiling um, made available for carrying the various services the fire will travel horizontally and vertically to the adjoining compartment also it will spread vertically or it can travel below so in some incidences we have normally fire travels upward but in some cases if it gets the uh, gets the uh, fuel then it can go down also so what is the purpose of fire compartmentation uh, compartmentation the compartmentation is a uh, important element of passive fire protection without compartmentalization passive fire protection is cannot be achieved by dividing the uh, premises into small compartments through fire door floors ceiling side walls of fire resistance construction this fire resistance construction is very important feature of passive fire protection then fire stopping there are various material available in the market which controls the fire or depending upon which type of services you are carrying from one compartment to another horizontally or vertically there are uh, materials available which can be used to seal this compartment so that we will see afterwards the compartmentation again it is a dividation of the building into the small compartment where smoke and hot gases cannot be traveled so what are the main features of the compartmentation where you are uh, required this compartmentation uh, use of different types of occupancies of building if you take example of some buildings where you have shopping malls at the bra, uh, da, uh, ground floor or first floor then you have residential one or the uh, business buildings above that second malls where you have the assembly occupancy uh, then the retail shops are there then you have uh, 
entertainment areas or assembly areas such type of occupancies shall be segregated with the com proper compartmentation fire load the national building code annexure a gives you the various various calorific values of different material where you can carry out uh, the fire load calculation on any particular compartment if the fire load is more you can distribute the load into different compartments by segregating it height of the building the height of the building is very challenging if you go higher and higher then you require a more time for evacuation so in such cases it is very important to segregate the uh, I means compartment where the fire is there and contain that so that you will get more time for evacuation the availability of the sprinklers sprinklers uh, with the proper distribution of sprinklers you can really it is a three dimensional extinguishing media you can pull the fire you can contain the fire and you can pull down the smoke also so the sprinkler is a very important feature in high rise buildings and for the compartmentation also it's very uh, much important this is the table given in table 1 uh, in national building code part 4 wherein the different types of uh, constructions are specified type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 when you are talking about high rise building or special buildings only type 1 and type 2 constructions are recommended and here they have specified the external walls then internal walls the fire enclosures then uh, internal barriers then the walls roofs of the diff, uh, type 1 construction and type 2 construction wherein as far as compartmentation is concerned the minimum requirement specified is 120 minutes or the 2 hours Uh, for these details uh, means details about the table 1 uh, there is another annexure c attached to the part 4 wherein different material and uh, their fire resistance uh, is given in different tables there are almost 8 to 9 tables uh, attached uh, in the annexure c of the part 4 uh, we will go through the compartmentation as provided in the national building code for uh, clause 4.5 wherein the building usually method to use uh, the fire barriers for instances these fire barriers needs to be penetrated uh, for the duct working plumbing electrical systems and in such cases use of passive fire protection measures shall be done so that the integrity of these barriers is not compromised this is very important uh, part of the definition wherein you have the fire rating walls but when the services are crossing like ducting plumbing or electrical ones when the cables are passing through it or uh, pipes are uh, plumbing pipes are passing through the uh, any penetration that should be properly sealed so that the fire resistance of 120 minutes shall be achieved in case of fire uh, it should not travel from one compartment to another compartment through this openings so that is the intent the areas compartmentation uh, is given as uh, this all the floors shall be compartmentalized or zoned with the area of each compartment being not more than 750 square meters for all occupancies it is a general statement but if you are providing sprinklers then there are some allowances given as already told by mr v suresh sir for basement where it is used only for car parking it is 3000 basement where for the other purposes for the services or electrical installations are there then it is 2000 institutional building that is uh, hospitals it is 1800 for the institutional other buildings 1125 then the mercantile assembly and the assembly building 2000 square meters business it parks uh, such type of uh, long spaces 3000 square meters and for uh, all other buildings it is 750 uh, there is again note provided below it uh, for the industrial buildings where low moderate or high hazard it should be as per the consultation with local uh, fire service where in uh, you have to respect the process if you go through the uh, steel industry or if you go to the uh, automobile industry there is a continuous process and you cannot really have the compartment uh, full proof compartment in industry where the continuous process where conveyor belts are moving up from one point to the other so normally uh, in industries there is a process uh, called where is raw material is uh, uh, stored in one place then the process is in the segregated uh, through another compartment and the finished good uh, is stored in another uh, compartment so normally this three type of compartmentation and small office areas or discussion areas are separated from the industrial building 
main is the utility building wherein you have the all services your boilers your underground diesel storage tank dg sets electrical transformers they are the stored or place outside the building there is again uh, one standard is 3594 for the warehousing and cold storage area where the compartmentation is recommended as 750 square meters but if you are going with the uh, with the sprinkler system it can be expanded up to 2250 square meters so this is the requirement from the individual standard so already we have seen uh, the requirement of compartmentation of 750 but if the floor plate is of only 750 then you should not compartmentalize into two compartment as per the requirement of code then you can have a single compartment of 750 uh, square meters and all the components of the compartment should have the minimum fire resistance rating of 120 minutes there is another uh, requirement in annexure h for the car parking facilities provided which is also touched by mr v suresh has already touched upon it it is giving the requirement of water curtains for compartmentalization of huge car parking areas where we have the floor plate may be of the basement up to 30000 or 40000 square meters also then there is a requirement again given in the metro stations metro stations are coming up in majority of the all mm -hmm. tier 1 and tier 2 cities mm -hmm. or metro cities or sub metros in india wherein underground uh, metro station and above ground, uh, ground metros are coming up so normally in metros they have divided uh, if you go through the j6.2 there is requirement given for compartmentation of 120 minutes between the public areas and non public areas transit areas and non transit areas and the ancillary areas uh, where which are located 3 meters away from the train ways so this is a table provided in uh, that annexure table 27 which speaks about the fire rating requirements uh, in open station and in enclosed station also it gives the requirement for the fire rating doors in the open station and enclosed station enclosed station means underground uh, metros so there are also auxiliary uh, means uh, substations electrical ups rooms there they have given the requirement for the 2 hours and 3 hours fire rating uh, in for the enclosures then there are different station managers rooms and all details are given in this room when we are talking about compartmentalization the hospital building is a very important one wherein horizontal uh, evacuation is recommended where you have uh, the floor plate divided into two fire zones basically compartment a and compartment b as shown in the diagram where the fire doors are provided in between and the fire resistance rating of 2 hours wall is there and doors also having fire resistance rating of 2 hours and they both the compartment has a fire exit so that in case of emergency anything goes wrong in compartment a the patients from that compartment a can be shifted to the uh, fire compartment b where they are comparatively safe and the whatever the detection system or sprinkler system available in the compartment a will come in action and they will contain that fire or if the evacuation is required that can be through the guided uh, help of uh, fire services or the trained uh, personnel within the hospital if in between what line you are means dividing into compartment a and b is a totally fire rated all services passing through compartment a to b they are sealed with 120 minutes fire rating uh, walls or the fire barriers or passive fire protection systems this is again example of the hospital building where in between arrows they are the fire doors which converts the uh, hospital floor plate into different fire zones Uh, fire compartments so this uh, we can achieve with the uh, aligning with the uh, walls of the uh, means maybe there will be consulting room maybe wards and the fire rated doors on the passage by providing this we can segregate the risk and we can have the different size of compartmentation depending upon the floor plate size this is another example wherein the uh, co common corridor connecting the different staircases are dividing this uh, uh, floor plate into two uh, compartments and the walls uh, passing through the common passages they are fire rated walls 
all the staircases are fire rated again with two hours fire rating and the fire doors are provided for this so this is another example given in national building code wherein you can have the compartmentation similar to this this is the very important feature which was introduced in the 2005 nbc but with diagram this time they have made it clear how uh, the fire tower or firefighter shaft should be uh, first time nbc has think about the firefighters which are responding to the fire emergencies and going for the firefighting and rescue operation this is very important feature for all high rise building and when we are talking about the high rise building above 100 meters this feature is of very much important from the safety of occupant also and for the evacuation uh, of the occupants and also for the firefighters to reach on the upper floors so this is the fire tower wherein from the uh, common passage you are entering into this uh, fire tower through fire door having two hours fire resistance it has got one fire lift one fire escape staircase and wet riser with hole drill hole uh, and the talk back facility and the detailed layout plan of the floor so this helps the fire fighters to reach on the seat of fire for uh, doing the fire fighting also for carrying out the guided uh, evacuation this lift can be used for the evacuation also and this entire thing is pressurized with the positive pressure so that no heat and smoke can enter in this uh, fire tower so if you see the violet color line on this drawing which is as a compartment this is a normal residential layout having the flats on a particular floor and they are protected with the fire doors so that anything goes wrong in any of the flat no heat and smoke will come in the common passages where the staircases are located and you will get more time for evacuation or the uh, firefighters to reach uh, up to that the seat of fire so that is the intent of the fire compartmentation in residential buildings also or you can utilize the same in the uh, hotel buildings also where you have a common passage and a number of rooms so every uh, fire door should be provided on each uh, hotel room so you can limit the spread of heat and smoke the advantages of compartmentalization uh, it helps to contain the fire in the origin of the uh, seat of the origin or the that compartment limit the potential size and the product of combustion because uh, it is a smothering fire you can say no uh, further escalation of uh, fire can be possible because the activation of sprinklers then the spread of fire in the different levels uh, that is restricted the safe evacuation of exit passages evacuation means and refuge areas so that is again advantage of the compartmentalization then limit the uh, building collapse so every building if when it is exposed to fire it should uh, remain there for the greater time so that all evacuation and fire fighting and rescue operation can be done without any uh, problem so that uh, can be achieved with this compartmentation improves the integrity stability that we have already discussed of the building so it will remain uh, intact for the longer time then providing sufficient time for the evacuation and uh, for the firefighters to reach uh, up to the upper floors for carrying out firefighting and rescue operation so this is the normal scenario in case of fire it is called as a stack effect from the any origin of the fire heat and smoke will travel to the common passages and it will go to the upward direction to the upper uh, side and it will uh, create a secondary fire on the top uh, position if they, uh, if the smoke and heat don't get dissipated from the building so normally we provide the ventilation system at the top of the building that may be atrium or high rise buildings or the lift machine rooms where you can uh, ventilate the smoke second option uh, figure is the wind due to wind if the fire smoke uh, fire and smoke is coming out of from the windows and it is we call it as a leaf frog effect from external side tra uh, fire is traveling from the one uh, floor to the another floor so that also uh, can be uh, curtailed or restricted if we have the proper compartmentalization this these are the normal effect uh, fire is there in the bottom compartment and through window it is spreading on the upper floors if there is opening Uh, from the windows or any of the services then definitely fire will spread on the upper floor 
on the right hand side this is the normal scenario of cladding which is used normally in uh, majority of the it parks or now in the residential buildings also high rise residential building if the gap between the structural component and the glass is not properly sealed with the fire retarded uh, component or the glass wool then the fire may travel through these gaps on the upper floors the grenfell fire in london was the example of this uh, incidence then again same internal spread of the fire and the exposure hazard that is the radiant heat uh, fire can spread internally through the uh, conduction convection and radiation uh, also it can uh, spread to the adjoining we called it as a exposure hazard point of view that also uh, sometimes uh, affect the adjacent property may set on fire so how compartmentation uh, can be achieved so we have to use the proper uh mm -hmm. fire retardant material uh, such as means it should be a entire assembly only if you are going for the fire doors and the remaining part of the wall is not up to 2 hours fire rated only fire door is 2 hours fire rated then it is of no use and definitely in case of fire uh, fire will penetrate through uh, the compartment and it will pass to the adjoining one second is the ventilation system is very important for the basement which was also touched by we suresh sir wherein you sh should have the fire rated uh, ducting system passing through there are three levels or four levels of basement now available there are cutouts provided where, from where you can uh, have the exhaust uh, for the independent uh, basement and it is uh, uh, taken out hot heat and smoke from the basement and it is sent to the environment or the exhaust uh, through the exhaust system but this system should be totally fire rated one Uh, all ducting everything fans should have the fire resistance rating so that it will uh, it the heat and smoke will not communicate with the other uh, uh, basements and uh, you can have the proper uh, fire dampers also if it is mechanically ventilated the fire stoppings uh, which are used for this uh, sealing of these ducts cables electrical wiring telephone cables fiber optic or whatever uh services passing through horizontally or vertical should have the 2 hours fire resistance minimum and they should have the proper uh, functioning and uh, testing certificate uh, to that effect so that is very much important as far as uh, fire compartmentalization is concerned so we will uh, go through the different types of such type of uh, services electrical ones uh, or plumbing ones are passed through the uh, compartment or different floors and uh, you can see the glazing also you can see the ducting horizontal ones and which has to be uh, totally sealed at particular level and in addition to that you should have the fire uh, doors and ventilation system and the sprinkler system in the compartment to contain that particular fire so this is the example of how the plumbing is pass through the different compartment horizontally and vertically and everywhere the fire stops or fire sealant shall be used to uh, contain uh, uh, the fire in case of fire this will come in action and it will not allow fire to spread horizontally and vertically this is the normal practice uh, used for carrying the electrical uh, uh, cables in a high rise buildings where you have a a duct separate duct and in that also you have buzz bar like situation uh, different services are passing through the ducts in that electrical ones or fiber optic or any it related things so this is the inspection door which should have the fire resistance rating then this is the uh, normal scenario wherein the fire uh, retardant uh, ceilings or uh, sealants are used in the duct uh, so that Uh, whatever services going on electrical one fiber optics or plumbing that can be uh, in case of fire they may get melt or uh, due to fire they will uh, give the uh, holes or penetration available in the uh, compartment but this the sealants will come in action and they will seal the uh, openings and they will give the minimum 120 minutes fire rating so these are the normal practices adopted in high rise buildings it parks and data centers i have seen this uh, these are the again examples how the vertical services are properly sealed one 
these are the air conditioning ducts which are uh, covered with the cladding uh, they are the fire rated cladding wherein uh, you can use this uh, for the uh, removal of hot gases and the smoke from the com uh, various compartments so this is these are some examples wherein how the uh, normal situation without any means uh, compartmentalization how the penetration is done there is no sealant use uh, no fire barriers are used uh, and haphazardly fire, uh, cables and the services are passed from one compartment to another compartment this is again glass pools are used but they are not properly sealed number of uh, services air conditioning ducts then your cables electrical cables fiber optic cables they are passing as it is with the holes see anything goes wrong definitely they will pass heat and smoke this is they have spent money for the passive fire protection system but workmanship is very poor so it is not uh, means uh, of any use definitely in case of uh, fire the heat and smoke will pass from one compartment to another this is the example of fire door which is having the gap in between so this fire door is of no use it will definitely pass heat and smoke from one compartment to another the overlapping is not there and uh, such type of uh, so called or me too products are available in the market where uh, that is of no use in case of real emergencies so these are the examples of uh, how uh, the things are done but it should be done with the proper trained and qualified uh, engineer or installer having knowledge of uh, passive fire protection system so that uh, in real emergency the system will work and it can save precious human life and property so second thing is in uh, majority of the industrial buildings the uh, uh, iron rods or the i beams are used for the loading purposes so if anything goes wrong in case of fire that heat and uh, will uh, due to the conduction convection and radiation the heat uh, uh, will means affect the steel bars and it will lose its strength and it is a possibility that structure may fall down so to avoid that we sh should protect these main members or the supporting members of the steel in industries that may be achieved by using the cladding uh, such type of cladding are used in the industries to protect that so that for the longer time it they will sustain and from the business continuity point of view also this is uh, very important now the paints are also available you can apply the paints also on this uh, that will give you the 120 min minutes or 4 hours fire uh, rating so these are the normal uh, steel protection use in uh, warehousing and major uh, industrial buildings where the potential uh, risk are more or high hazard activities are carried out again you can have the uh, any of the old timber marts or uh, beams or columns that you can protect with the uh, separate cladding by uh, giving the layer of the fire resistance material having a rating of 120 minutes so these are the i beams protected with the fire resistance uh, uh, cladding and in case of fire this cladding uh, will give you more time so the heat and uh, will not reach to the i beams this is the industrial type of a warehouse kind of a, a building normally used sheds and you can have the proper walls for restricting uh, the spread of a uh, heat and smoke from one compartment to another and you can segregate the risk in the industrial and warehousing where you have a different commodities uh, for the storage purposes and that everything should be as uh, mentioned by mr v suresh it should be uh, covered I means governed by the travel distance also and the uh, occupant load also so these two features are also go hand to hand with the compartmentalization normally different types of occupancy where you have the assembly uh, occupancy then mercantile and the business occupancy so you can segregate this normally this happens in the mall buildings or uh, there are um, major buildings where you have a podium uh, kind of a thing and a ground level uh, shopping areas then car parking for podium and then up again on the top of the building there are business buildings or residential building so in this uh, you have you should have the proper compartment stabilization 
the conclusion of my presentation is uh, passive fire protection is really uh, important from the safety of the occupant and also for the fire fighters also who are responding to the fire so at the initial stage at the planning stage if all architects or civil engineers or the developers they spend some time uh, for the use of building and segregate the different compartment and they should plan it from the uh, means at the initial stage itself second thing if they go for the passive the sealant or proper tested material then they are investing initially a surplus amount but in long terms definitely it will help uh, for giving more protection to the building and they can really market now it is a high time when you are going above 100 meters number of buildings are coming up in many metros above 100 and many metros also so it is high time to go for the passive uh, kind of a thing, system which is now uh, will spell a uh, spell in part 4 uh, so the passive thing will give you more uh, safety to the occupant and it will limit the spread of heat and smoke in one particular compartment and also it will help the firefighters for carrying out effective uh, rescue operations and firefighting operation so that's all from my side thank you very much dom dominic yeah and uh, video then uh, your volume yeah yeah I'm go ahead i'm muted so we have the so thank you uh, thank you mr varik it was a wonderful insight and your touched up on very very important subject and i think uh, i have some almost 30 question to you by the <laughs> rightly rightly Go ahead, go ahead. So I don't know how many would I have. Kumar is a graduate in civil engineering from BIT College of Karnataka, uh, Kuwaitu University, in 1997, and is obtained M.Tech in environmental engineering from SJCE College, Mysore, in 2001. He is the current director of Maple Engineering Design Services. india private limited he was engaged in uh, uh, civil uh, civil environmental engineering with hl for one year one year training and associate with techline green environmental consultant as an environmental engineer during his tenure he executed many projects for sewage treatment plant and water treatment plant design and installation work he also developed a software to design a sewage treatment plant unit as a thesis for his master degree he was instrumental in designing a various project highly sophisticated in nature during his tenure he has designed many landmark projects designed in plumbing system for commercial complexes it campuses residential townships high rise apartment hotels and hospitals he has carried out a number of projects for various institution and clients in bangalore hyderabad chennai and mumbai as well as other parts of the country design plumbing fire protection industrial system including water and sewage treatment plants for hotels and hospitals software building and software products golf golf courses and commercial building in coordination with reputed indian architects and developer today mr prasanna kumar is going to touch upon the challenges of implementing the compartmentation spaces what does the architect talks about it what is a builder so he's going to present on various aspect and also he is going to attend lot of questions on the challenges of implementation over to prasanna kumar thank you thank you sir uh, can i share the screen yeah you can share you have 30 minutes uh, uh, prasanna yeah sure okay uh, good morning everyone uh, so i'll be talking on the compartmentation of spaces in the buildings uh, as per the national building code 
Mr. Suresh uh, Saab and Mr. Vaisa Saab has already briefed a lot of uh, information on the National Building Code, what it briefs, the code, uh, what it tells on the compartmentation of the spaces to be done in various occupancies. So I'll be just briefing on the, uh, the requirement of compartmentation and the briefing of compartmentation. But majorly, I'll be uh, uh, working towards the architects, developers, and from a, as, a, as I am an MEP consultant, what we daily face the challenges in designing, in implementing these codes. So we have a, a, some concerns in whenever uh, we start implementing the code lines to the existing buildings or the live projects, what is happening. 100% the compartmentation is a very advantageous, but how to implement effectively such that it works as per the code are based on the uh, code compliances. So uh, the, we, we talked on the compartmentation. So what is a compartmentation? Very, very general line. It is a line has to be defined to control the fire or the smoke spreading to the next area. It's basically uh, the definitions, uh, what the uh, NBC has given, Mr. Varik Sab has briefed it. So compartmentation is basically the passive fire protection, uh, which has to uh, built within the part of the floor area such that the spread will not happen. How to achieve the compartmentation? Compartmentation can be achieved by the fire doors, the fire resistance floors, the walls, and uh, we can use the curtains, the water curtains, and also there are the services. When we work as an MEP consultant, there are the services crossing from one compartment to another compartment uh, called as a penetrates, which can be also to be stopped or the fire stoppers to be used. So the main objective of the fire compartmentation is to uh, avoid the rapid spread of the fire. It uh, cannot be done at the, when the incident happened, the fire happened at that time, the containment cannot be done. It's very difficult to do that. But doing the containment during the design or built within the building will always help the extinguishing of the fire. So what are the main, uh, we, we as a designer, we look at the compartmentation in three major ways. One is human safety, another is the loss prevention and quicker extinguishment. So these are the three parameters we are looking at the safeguarding the building and the humans and the properties whenever the fire happens. So why the uh, importance is given is because the fire can spread very quickly. I'll tell you the very small incidents like a 30, within a 30 seconds, uh, the room can be filled with the smoke or with the fire. If it is not controlled or if the extinguishing is not starting. The technical reason of uh, uh, the fire going out of control or the faster spreading is the heat. It eats the air surrounding the fire and uh, the hot air as a technically it moves upward towards the ceiling and it starts spreading to the next areas. The smoke is the one which starts transferring faster then the fire follows that one. So uh, the protection happens in two ways. One is the active uh, protection, another is the passive protection. So active protection is mainly on the, the sprinklers, the alarm system, the smoke evacuations, the extinguishers, what we use in the, our designs as per the codes. But passive fire protection will help us to contain the spread of fire and smoke to the one area, which helps the active protection to take action very fastly and get the control on the fire immediately without any uh, or major loss preventions. Like the passive protections, we have the smoke dampers, fire rated walls, fire doors, fire curtains uh, as a passive fire protection systems. So uh, the occupancy wise, the occupancy wise, the compartmentations are briefed in the code. Uh, Mr. Varik Sab has run on the, uh, what all the areas, how much areas to be done, how the occupancy, uh, uh, the in residential occupancy, business occupancy, mercantile occupancy, how the compartment areas to be allocated are to be planned. But additional to this, there are the fire rated areas to be done because these are the common areas like the stairwells, lift lobbies, the corridors. These are to be protected. These are, these are the helps us to evacuate the people from the building. Other than that, there are hazardous locations like the electrical rooms, DG rooms, the communication rooms and the transformer yard areas. If there are uh, many, many projects has the transformers, indoor transformers. So the protection of these areas, they I call it them as a, not a fire spreading. They are like a bombs. So they will multiply the fire into more uh, higher denser. So these areas need to be protected as with the proper fire rating elements. 
so the national building code and many of the international codes very clearly specified the compartmentation requirement for the different occupancies and the building corporates the national building code till 2016 was uh, not much strong on the uh, mentioning strong on the uh, the requirement of the compartmentation but in 2016 the very much clarity has come on the compartmentation so the national building code requirement on the compartmentation uh, we already uh, discussed earlier now so the area is 750 square meter there is a lot of question asked by uh, my uh, uh, clients the why 750 to 3000 why 2000 so these are the areas uh, i mean uh, the fraternity is keep on discussing on these areas but there is a discussion happening uh, how the areas are achieved how the areas can be increased or decreased these areas are still the under discussion of fraternity just to brief on the things up to 750 square meter we don't uh, need to do a compartmentation as per the code now so up to 750 square meter fire can be controlled or i mean extinguishing can be taken above 750 up to uh, the different uh, areas given in the table up to that it is a uh, minimum of two compartment there is no called as single compartment from 750 to if i take a uh, the business class building business class building tells 3000 square meter so 750 to 3000 we need to do a minimum two compartments so above 3000 it will be every 3000 one compartment will be added uh, now the question uh, i'll be raising in the next this one is so when the areas are lesser the when the areas are less than 3000 we have to make a minimum two compartments that is a uh, one of the challenging what we are happening because the market has a lot of small floor plates buildings in the uh, usage so before going to there Uh, i'll just touch upon the uh, the type of compartmentation what we generally do in the uh, areas one is uh, on the upper levels or the occupancy levels we use the fire curtains or the fire rated walls to separate the fire or we use a water curtains in the parking area where the drainage can be done very easily we use the water curtains to avoid the spread of fires how uh, the technically the integration or the working of fire curtains uh, the uh, water curtains will happen through the sprinklers and the flow switches the fire curtains will be integrated with the fire alarm systems i was talking on the smaller floor plate and the challenges the challenges are here is the urban areas generally have a very high demand for 1500 to 2000 square meter of floor plate so we can see many buildings many commercial buildings coming up with these areas one floor plate so that the end user can occupy the building as per the code we need to make a two compartments and each compartment need to have a fire tower this is what the codal uh, statement uh, when we try to make it because when the smaller uh, floor plates are planned uh, we have to provide the minimum requirement of utility rooms like the uh, like the electrical room ah rooms the toilets we have to make which occupies around 15% of the floor area and the lift staircase and lobbies will occupy to 5 to 8% of the area but now when the smaller floor plates we need to add the more fire towers the more corridors uh, the designers or the architects are finding a little bit of tight hand on the innovative floor plates and developers crimping on the uh, the reduction in the carpet areas so the lot of uh, the, the right side i have put a small sketch there how the uh, restriction happens when we are making the uh, compartmentation in the smaller floor floor plates uh, the the local departments or the code allows us to use a single fire tower for less than 3000 under horizontal egress clause such that i can allow from one compartment to another compartment using common corridor for person to evacuate and second challenge what we have is we don't know the end user here we don't know the tenants so the tenant layouts are variables the end user uh, uh, thinking is variable here to establish the compartment line Uh, in the empty floor plate is literally a challenging because when we uh, establish uh, this line during the uh, obtaining the no objection certificate or during the occupancy certification so this line will vary and this line practically get diminished or will be erased when the start a tenant starts coming into that and the tenants changes every time from time to time uh, vacating the buildings so this is a very uh, uh, very roughly i have put here so for less than 3000 square meter single fire tower uh, i mean uh, if it is given a provision that would help because uh, some of the departments are allowing now 
uh, making a provision for the horizontal egress class that I create a common corridor and both compartment can access the common fire tower. It's only when the area is less than 3000. More than 3000, it will not be a concern, but less than 3000, there was a, there is a concern in the market. And as per the code, we have to connect the fire tower to the refugee area. A person to uh, get evacuated because the refugee area is a very easy way of evacuation, which starts from 30 meter, 25 meter, it starts. But the concern here is when there is a smaller floor plates, we need to have a common corridors to evacuate both the compartments to the refugee areas. Now these compart uh, corridors, we have to make a safe corridor. Because of floor plates smaller, there are a lot of service room doors opens to these corridors. Uh, I am highlighting uh, based on my uh, exposure with many projects now, I'm discussing with the architects and the developers, how to make these uh, like electrical room opens, the shaft opens to the corridors, how to make it as a safe corridor. So we end up in making the fire doors for all those areas. Uh, there is a little bit of crimping happens because the cost keep on increasing because when we make the corridor safe, there are a lot of doors or the shafts which we need to make a fire safer. And uh, when we go to the parking areas, when we go to the parking areas, the code mentions uh, the 3000 square meter can be compartmentalized with the water curtains. Uh, 3000 square meter is a, a number. Uh, I don't know how to, uh, uh, I mean, implement this 3000 square meter here. What we are doing is as of now, the built up area will be dividing by 3000 square meter. We are making the so many compartments. When there is a multi-level of uh, basements, we have the three basement and four basements. In that condition, what happens? The number of compartments increases drastically. Uh, one of the example is one of my project, which has around four level of basement and huge floor plate area has roughly around the 60 compartments happening there. So it has a uh, practical issue of, um, uh, I mean, getting the 60 compartments uh, with the water curtains. And drawing these water curtain lines, uh, uh, the square or rectangular shape basements are not much issue, but when the odd shape of the basement comes, drawing these lines is literally a challenge here. And the, one more thing is the areas. Like we have a lot of uh, sumps having the, the pump rooms having the, the STPs having in the compartment areas. Do we need to add these areas to the compartmentation? This is a general common question which comes from the architects and the developer side. Because when the basement is there, there are a lot of service areas happening and few areas are the sump only, there is no occupancy happening. Should we add those areas a part of compartment? This is a one question. And the next would be the, the ramps. The code need to brief much on the ramps because the, the ramps gets connected from the lower level to higher level. It has, if you have the three basement, all the three basement, the ramps gets connected. Should we do the same compartmentation as we are doing in the escalators in the upper levels with the smoke barriers or should we put it under one uh, compartment or should we have the uh, edge sprinklers so that the, uh, the fire will not get into the ramps because the vehicular movement will not be there. The ramps will become uh, idle when there is a fire happening there. The only the staircases are used for the evacuation. Uh, and second thing on the uh, parking level is the structural system. I'm touching on the practical things here. The structural systems has a capitals, the beams happening there. When we are uh, putting the water curtains, the water curtains cannot be taken to the highest level of the slab because of the limitation. So when we limit it, uh, the wide angle of opening of the water curtain will create a gap above the uh, water curtain line where the chances of smoke and fire uh, spreading to the next compartment would be there. I think uh, the, code the code should little bit of emphasize on the what is the gap to be provided or the water curtain is the one of the uh, topmost layer below that all other services need to happen. Some uh, informations are required because we are doing this in many of the projects now. Uh, we are finding a gap above and we are finding uh, the angle what it opens. The K23 nozzles what has been suggested by the code which has around 33 liters per minute of uh, flow and uh, what we do is we take the biggest compartment and we put the total number of nozzles, uh, uh, submit up all the uh, flow there and we uh, make a 60 minutes of storage and a, 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 a dedicated pump for the water curtain. I was explaining on the, one of the big project here. As per the code, uh, the fresh air inlet and the exhaust need to be planned for every compartment, for every basement line. It is 
uh, the biggest floor plate which have more number of compartments here the building footprint is something like what i shown in the right side the central portion getting the fresh air and exhaust termination shafts at the ground level and podium level is really challenging because it comes to the part of the interior of the building because the building height is somewhere around 20 25 floors taking all these shafts up to the terrace level is literally a challenge for us because uh, such much uh, capacity fans also need to be provided and they will be passing through all the occupant areas we have to terminate at the ground floor or the termination so how we uh, when we start doing the compartmentation we see that at least one edge of the compartmentation is touching the periphery such that the fresh air and exhaust uh, ducts can be provided and also we have to we can't keep it together we need to keep it in a opposite direction that is a very advantageous i can't keep my fresh air intake and the exhaust very close to each other so i have to keep it at least away little away from each other and uh, the things work fantastically and uh, the code I, we feel the code need to give little more clarity on the fire towers in the basement uh, there is a statement in the code at mentioning that the fire every compartment needs one fire tower now when we go to the basement we have more number of compartment compared to the upper levels upper levels may be two compartment but when we go to the basement the extended basement will be having a seven to eight compartments the fire towers are limited from ground to above they are not coming they are coming below but not compartment wise so many compartment doesn't have a fire tower uh, the fire department the fireman guy need to go to basement and access the uh, evacuation process there the occupancy to be evacuated our fire tower should go there that clarity is required as of now the basements uh, compartment all the compartment will not have the fire tower only ground and above are planned with the fire towers so these are the additional uh, requirements in the uh, national building code uh, where it asks for the compartmentation uh, uh, additional that penetrates the service lines which are crossing from one compartment to another compartment need to use the fire stoppers uh, we have been using the fire stoppers here the we have been using the fire stoppers if it is in uh, uh, like in uh, flammable material the pvc pipes or the cables which gets melted these fire stoppers will uh, will seal the hole and will not allow the fire or smoke to travel from one compartment to another compartment now the challenge here is when the tenant comes the tenants keep on changing so the they make the penetration those penetration sealing and those penetration keep on changing because whenever the tenant changes this will be happening so controlling of these thing is a challenge in the to the developers because it is not uh, it need to be monitored uh, maybe uh, uh, every year uh, these penetrations and these passive protections also to be checked and also the ahus uh, the codal specification is compartment wise we should have any ahus and if it is it is very better to avoid the uh, uh ducts moving from one compartment to un another compartment if it is uh, unavoidable situation we have to use the dampeners uh, once again the crimping in the market is the com the smaller floor plate the cost of the ahus the bigger floor plate yes it is an advantage yes, because the cost of the ducting the size of ducting everything will come down in the basement we use the air intake and exhaust uh, compartment wise and the uh, level wise uh, the compartment shall be divided with the self closing fire doors here is here one more thing is when we design a base uh, bare floor plate the fire doors will not be active when the end user tenant comes fire doors will come which uh, the end user need to plan and there should be some procedure to monitor the buildings uh, every year or maybe every tenant changes there should be some procedure for that one to be checked uh, the hospitals uh, mentioned in the code is whenever we do a compartmentation, this, uh, the adjacent compartment should have an extra space provision for to accommodate the present one also, uh, the uh, adjoining uh, compartment. The more spaces are required because we need to plan for the uh, two two compartment together in a single compartment, and one fire tower need to be planned for each compartment in business assembly and the mercantile and uh, basement car parking. I just discussed on this K23 nozzles to be used. And additional water storage of 60 minutes should be planned with a dedicated pump. This has been already doing in the many of the projects now, and uh, it is becoming a very advantageous uh, for us to work on the compartmentation in the parking areas. And in the park, if the parking uh, is in the stilt area, has or has a natural ventilation, 
it can be called as a open parking system and compartments can be avoided uh, in this case i need to bring one more challenge here is the bigger mlcps the wider mlcps uh, which are the central cores are not accessed but yes as per the code they are giving the 40% opening around the periphery uh, uniformly but the central core because of the big floor but the central core is not accessible we have a, uh, a tendency of the fire there the jet fans are used for the we are suggesting we have to use a uh, mechanical ventilation for the central procedures to uh, do the ventilation uh, when there is a compartmentation happens the movement of the uh, uh, the people who are stuck in the compartment the code gives a clarity on this that's called as an horizontal exits are the staging arrangement the person can move from one compartment to another compartment or to the refugee area through the fire doors so these fire doors should be 120 minutes fire rating with the fire resistant wall that means whenever we plan a, a compartmentation in case of any compartment under fire the person can go to the adjacent compartment for an evacuation yes under the traveling distance limiting to the whatever the occupancy uh, as mentioned so the uh, on the kitchens the commercial kitchens which are very tend to have done the fire so i am a little bit touched on this one the compartmentations are very much required because majorly we see the fire in the kitchens uh, other than the one is a electrical gadgets which creates the fire and another is the kitchens which are creating the fire so commercial kitchens which are having a very good uh, area with the open flame cooking or with no open flame cooking need to have a 60 minutes of fire resistance wall that's what the code mentions but kitchens are generally located below the service floors and they need an accessing for the loading base for their uh, material transfers they need an access for the dining areas for the uh, i mean the uh, the waiters to transfer the food and materials but these kitchen areas making 60 minutes fire resistant little bit of challenge here and to locate it in a, a good condition there and also the flu or the exhaust duct passes through the compartment so there is an uh, kitchen with a big exhaust duct will be there which will be going up to the terrace level so uh, we have a uh, preference to take it outside to the external walls the reason is bringing it inside will create a much more fussy in the uh, taking to the roof areas because it has to pass through the guest areas so we generally practice it to keep it to the external surface such it goes to the roof area without creating any issues because we can't use the dampers here when it this ducts transfers from one compartment to another compartment moving to the terrace level so i uh, bring to the conclusion part here i'll put it under one line mentioning that compartment is very very important i agree with the things and the codal requirements but implementation as a challenges uh, to putting this lines and because the uh, environment what we are working is a different one we are creating a bare floor plate for the end users the tenants and who comes there uh, is a person who is living there actually and the fire incidents happens when he is there so containing the fire uh, in the origin area and implementing the passive fire protection is very very important for evacuation and fire extinguishing thank you sir thank you sir understand now that uh, ba is has made uh, the in the, in the indian standard free of cost so uh, you know sanjay uh, mr sanjay pant has just shared uh, this information that earlier it was quite expensive for people to access now this uh, indian standards are available free of cost to all the citizens of this country so those who are interested to have this uh, uh, you know the link uh, please send me on whatsapp i will share you this link and you can download when you download uh, this is what you get uh, uh, you know the on the link uh, sorry i am on that so so these are the various standard there are almost uh, 10 different standards uh, 
of various technical committees uh, has been published. Okay, well, let's move on. Uh, it's 12.30 now. Let's move on to the questions. Uh, we have almost uh, 68 questions. I will very selectively choose uh, uh, these questions. I am requesting uh, our uh, keynote uh, speaker, Mr. V. Suresh, Mr. Wari, and uh, Mr. Prasanna. Uh, anyone could uh, pick up to answer these uh, questions. Okay, I'll move on to the first question from Mr. Samandan uh, Chakapa. So, uh, he's a very senior member who's been in the industry for some time. So, his question is Is NBC insisting upon the fire rated window curtains? NBC, actually, there are two parameters. If you go to the table one, there are external facades or whatever the material they are using. It should be have some rating depending upon the fire compartmentation of 3.7 meters or up, up to 9 meters. Or if uh, the glass facades are used, you can have the protection of sprinklers. You can uh, install sprinklers in 600 mm from the glass facade so that in case of fire, the sprinkler will come in uh, action and it will cool down the uh, internal glass facade so that the uh, rating can be increased. So both the ways, if it is uh, architect or developer's choice, whether they wanted to go for the fire <coughs> rated uh, glass wall of two hours, or they can extend uh, the normal toughened glass with the use of sprinklers. So both options are available. Mr. Prasad Kumar can, uh, means he can also uh, provide sir, inputs on this. Normal uh, practice. The National Building Code has, doesn't specify anything specific to the one window curtain. There is no such something specifically to the window he curtain. Clothes, even you talk about curtain. Window curtains means he is talking about the tapestries as yeah. well as uh, the blinds. There, only thing is the flame spreader, uh, flame, flame spread ratings of this particular material becomes an important component of class A, B, C. Otherwise, it kind of fire resistance by itself. But the flame spreadability rating is an important component in terms of the curtains, which are the cloth curtains. Otherwise, fire curtains, as he said very clearly, that gives the correct information. Let's go to the next. Yeah, uh, we need to be very crisp in the answer because we have 60 questions to answer. So yeah. we'll quickly run. So the next question from uh, Nupura is asking for compartmentation guidelines for data center with respect to fire rating. Do we have uh, for data center guidelines? No, electronically data center, I don't think there is a specific uh, a compartmentation, but normally uh, uh, means whatever given with sprinklers or uh, the business buildings or uh, 3000 square meters, you yeah. can have the compartmentation. That's right. 3000 square right. meters is the limit for the data center. Correct. Yes, Your interpretation yes. is right. Next. It's okay, uh, Mr. Dear Shah is asking question, though Mr. Raman Kapoor tried to answer, he's asking when I'm quite keen, differentiate between a smoke curtain and a fire curtain and its temperature rating. Uh, so differentiate between smoke so curtain and a fire curtain. So, uh, so basically you can tell that the application wise they are different. Uh, the smoke curtains will never come up to the, uh, the floor level. The fire curtains has to reach the floor level. Right. The smoke curtains are the only the barriers which are happening at the top 600 to 800 mm maximum, uh, 450 to 600 mm maximum. Uh, the smoke barriers are also to activate the sprinklers there. They have to activate the sprinklers to cool the sp uh, smoke. Uh, the, the fire rating wise, the, the temperature rating is uh, not a thing there. They are used for different applications only. I mean, yeah, they are for cool. different applications. One is for yeah. the containment of the fire, the other one is for the spread of the smoke. Okay. Okay. The next question from Mahavir. Can you please explain the calculation of fire load briefly? Fire load, uh, you have to go through the table uh, means uh, provided at Annexure A of National Building Code Part 4, wherein the calorific value of different materials are mentioned. Then you have to take the whatever load of that particular compartment. If you are having a flat, you have the sofas, then wooden thing. So every calorific value into how many kgs. 
so that much fire load you have to identify in particular uh, that floor so then you have to segregate depending upon the use of the uh, floor if i can uh, expand uh, beyond uh, santosh that's an important query uh, normally depending upon the nature of occupancies that you have the amount of combustible contents inside those particular building as given in the table will give an idea roughly a residential building with the nature of thing coming you can expect reasonably one to two hour fire severity coming over there the moment you get on to uh, a business building will be about three hours fire uh, fire severity when you go into a hazardous or a retail or a merchandise area you'll get into about three to four hours of fire uh, severity fire severity would represent the amount of the fire load that will be coming in terms of combustible contents over there so therefore for each of those building depending upon the fire severity of the particular building and the fire load that becoming the fire resistance rating for the roofs and walls and other related element for each of the compartment should cover at least so much about the fire resistance as the fire severity or the particular building over there incidentally this is also covered in the columns and beams of the building if you are buildings with a four hour fire then the fire resistance rating for the cover for the column and beam Uh, should be important that's the point that uh, uh, mr uh, warik was telling on the integrity structural integrity of the building he talked about and that's an important component where because of the fire the columns beams and starts buckling by itself so it's not able to have the integrity on that so it's an important question details are available in the nbc for more details you can always be in touch with us okay next question from mishwan nalwade is asking can you consider glass facade as a fire resistance wall or a fire resistance wall sad you I take it cannot... well, you you want take person or so it is glass is not recommended when it is a common passage or leading to the staircase or any exit uh, mode internal partition yes you can means the fire rated glass are available in india manufactured now in india so solution is available but it should not be used uh, closing the your uh, exit routes or your refuge areas or the common uh, path of travels so or that yeah. area you should avoid yes sir yes sir. yeah possibly Correct. possibly the question that he asked must be talking of the completely glazed building wherein all your external walls etc could be structural glazing that's coming on that and maybe you should be aware that the national building code 2016 has got a separate chapter called part 6 structural design and section 8 is on the structural glazing aspect and therefore glazing becomes a wrap around for the whole building and therefore that's a wall you know there is no other so how do you design the particular the one from fire resistance point of view has been covered in detail and uh, a 10% opening of those particular glasses is now introduced the 2016 version of the national building code for openable either uh, horizontally or top or bottom for extraction of the smoke or for the coming in of the uh, fire brigade and other members to come into the building so these provisions if you deal with part 4 of the nbc as well as with the part 6 section uh, uh, section 8 will give a good idea on application of glass in the building as he said for different particular one is a structural one which are otherwise on partition other related one and as varik sir rightly said depending upon the situation the, the degree of fire resistance required to the glass are also identified with different qualities of glasses words okay so next question from radha krishna uh, is from bangalore why every state has a different perception on implementation of compartmentation in commercial building he says a different state has a different regulation it cannot, it cannot have radha kishan's understanding is wrong there is only one understanding is the national building code where each of the building compartment space is identified 1125 2000 2500 3000 and all have been given there so all the states are now increasingly following the provisions of the nbc even there's a recommendatory document by reference to the nbc as the implementing one under the fire services act and the provisions of the nbc will give a uniform value to deal with the particular one it's a matter of interpretation at the local level they want to put compartment local at a smaller one but otherwise as i understand i'm sure mr wari can clarify 
because they have done the Maharashtra State Fire Service Act, wherein the provisions of the NBC is ditto utilized for implementation of that. So there's only one, uh, unless any local uh, municipal corporation, which they would not have the right level of uh, guidance basis for deciding a lower compartment area than what is put in the NBC. NBC takes it over international best practices available, be it the provisions of the NFPA or the provisions of the British standards, Canadian fire codes, as well as other fire codes, etc. And whatever we have done over there, it reflects the best international practice. Variksa, would you like to clarify more on that? It is absolutely clear. I Means NBC has got sufficient uh, I mean, provisions for the different kind of uh, occupancies. Only here, I think he is indicating the uh, interpretation of the codal provision at grassroots level. So it is the uh, varies sometimes because of the awareness of the fire officers at that level. Uh, different uh, materials are nowadays used. The passive fire protection specifically, there are a handful of manufacturers in India and uh, very few uh, installers also. So based upon that, there may be uh, that much awareness is not there up to that uh, fire officers at say small municipal councils or corporation level. So that may be the issue he is raising at. But uh, as far as uh, means majority of the international standards, uh, what provisions have same we have copied in the, uh, our code and we are coming up with the means we have now BIS has got directly tied with ISO. So whatever the ISO standards are there, we can adopt uh, directly in our uh, Indian standard. So based upon that, international best practices already uh, coming up in our standards also. So only the area the, possibly, uh, I, I mean, a caveat is that building code is a guiding document unless the State Fire Act adopts that as a document, then it becomes a mandatory document, not recommendatory. But the court, in all fairness, what they have done is they have said, in case the U is a guiding document and you can adapt it or adopt it, there are two words. Adapt mm. means you can make some local variations there. Adopt means fully no change there. But if you're going to adapt to some local variation coming over there, then you're going to give a reason why that particular small change I'm making. For example, the height of a building, 15 meters, 16 meters, there are some people who have made it slightly change, etc., etc., some of the local level area. Then you're going to give a good reason why I'm making that particular change with good justification by that particular state government or a municipal corporation who wants to make a slight marginal change on that. But as uh, uh, Varik Sab rightly said, by and large, everybody is using the NBC norms. Yeah, I, I remember this question, sir, because uh, you've interacted with me on this question because architect says no compartment, uh, compartmentation is required. Then I asked uh, the CEO of uh, Bangalore. He said, no, we follow the NBC guidelines. It is mandatory. Yeah. So there was a confusion because architect saying no, the our fire department said yes. Let's move on to the next question, sir. Mr. Gulshan Khurana is a very active member of BA in BAS and also based out of Delhi. Uh, is water curtain an effective means to contain fire and smoke within the compartment? Yeah, I think the answer Vari can give. Already, Mr. Prasanna Kumar has explained there we yeah. cannot have this foolproof uh, uh, mechanism. It is not a foolproof solution because there are gaps because pipes are crossing below the beams and columns. Sometimes there is there are gaps created in between. And due to the velocity also of water curtains, there is a uh, means airways are created in the uh, basement. And secondly, basement, if you are talking about three, four level of basement, the drainaging of this water means water collected at that particular uh, basement level is also a challenge. Secondly, in addition to whatever fire system you have, that is your hydrant sprinkler, you have to calculate this additional load and you should have a separate pumping for mm. this so that it will it should not affect yes. your main system, main fire protection. So that is, it is a huge dead uh, storage of water uh, which created in the building and it uh, occupies uh, huge spaces. And considering the scarcity of water in future also, it is not a proper solution. So we have to see the internationally if they are uh, by using the fire curtains, uh, if you can aggregate the things or if the normal sprinklers are provided by using smoke barriers, if the sprinklers of that particular zone gets activated. Because 
it is not possible to uh, evacuate entire all I mean, cars also you don't know where their owners are yeah. keys are not kept over there so there are so many challenges in the basement and visibility and reaching up to the seat of fire is very yes. essential so sprinkler is the more uh, assured type of a uh, uh, system fire protection system in the basement as compared to this water curtain or compartmentation yes sir i i agree with uh, mr varis so what is that there are the gaps the technical gaps are there and more than the fire we have lot of other services criss crossing this we have the pressure exhaust ducts the jet fans the electrical cable trays so it can be a little more improvised uh, version to putting the basements under protection zone so let's move on to mr shankar lingam question please address fire rating for industrial building such as compressor house a steam turbine shelter etc varis sir as, as far as industrial <laughs> buildings are <laughs> yeah yeah industrial buildings are concerned normally the boiler houses as per the respective there is a central act and implementation is done by the dish authorities or the boiler authorities of that particular state wherein they recommend the four hours fire resistance wall from all three sides and it should Uh, get open to the one side uh, to the natural vent naturally ventilated it should not communicate to the main building at all there should not be any ventilation or window or door uh, communicating from the boiler house to the your main building activity same is the with the transformers or electrical ones so yes. if you have the transformer uh, of any capacity having uh, air cooled or uh, oil cooled then you should have the proper barrier around the three sides and uh, that that should not communicate with your uh, main building activity there should be a sufficient space in between that is the ideal means we can say the segregation of risk in industries is very important where as i told you uh, there is a risk of the raw material the flammability of that raw material depending on, upon that uh, if it is a solvent then it should be stored in underground tanks nowadays it is approved by the chief control of explosives uh, then secondly the process areas hazards of process areas that should be segregated and after uh, finished goods the finished goods also should be segregated in different compartments so depending upon the potential you have to have the hazop study of the industrial building what are the potential hazards associated at every activity that you should isolate and try to make it in the different compartment so this will give you more uh, safe environment for the occupant and from the business continuity point of view also it is very important so let's move to a very important question by our friend raman kapoor is asking there is a lot of confusion with the end clients on same if this fire meter minimum compartment versus compartment size for basement with car park over 3000 square meter i think is already clarified by prasanna kumar this question came before prasanna kumar really presented yeah, yeah. it this is I, before I this came earlier that's yeah. already answered he has already given details what does it mean for 750 and what is it in 1000 maybe prasanna can once again take a minute more to clarify yeah yeah uh, sure sir the 750 square meter is the minimum compartment requirement uh, uh, what has to be done where that table is not mentioning the areas that is a 750 but table very clearly mentions the car parking areas are the any parking areas 3000, 3000 square meter ah uh, parking areas to be 3000 and the basement without parking to be 2000 so this is very clear in the table uh, if it is the areas are between 750 to 3000 then there is a note below clearly mentioning that minimum two compartment need to be done so there is no nothing called as single compartment when the area crosses 750 square meter Okay, uh, Mr. Vinay Deshpande, he has put a lot of questions. So I am picking a few of that. Uh, is the fire rating specified is for integrity or insulation of fire barrier? As far as the structure is concerned, these three parameters are paramount importance: stability, integrity, and penetration. So all these three features are, uh, should be there. Then only you can say it is a properly fire uh, rated compartment. so as far as means whatever the test carried out for the fire resistance test as per the indian standards or any bis or international standards so they speaks about these three uh, uh, characteristics of material that is the stability integrity and penetration 
so if it is passes for that particular time then only they give approval to that material so uh, i think this three should be there for any uh, material this uh, three characteristics are uh, very much important sir over to milindrane from mumbai he is asking for water curtain system what is the design density specified how much area to be covered how much area should be covered means it is a basement area whatever you have so you have to cover compartmentation requirement with sprinkler it is given in the code if it is for the parking in the basement it is 3000 if it is for the services as told by mr prasanna kumar you have to restrict up to 2000 square meters so for 2000 square meters you have to have a separate grid separate pipeline going up to uh, that uh, water tank so and with the deluge wall you have to see that that compartment will come in action so it is a very tedious kind of a thing if you are talking about 30000 i think the varik sir the functional requirement is given this should be yes. over and above the water required for fire fighting separately water required for the yes, water sir. number 1 number 2 you also have a requirement that that should be okay for 60 minutes of fire fighting requirement so you require a area wise how do you calculate number 2 the time period for which you will have to be available and this should be separate i think these yes. functional requirements put together will help you to decide on the amount of water storage needed okay yes yes so let's move to ashutosh uh, question please elaborate the compartmentation aspect for mall building that is d6 occupancy so sanak. mall building or mall building mall mall m a l mall oh yes. right of course the mercantile building you had a fire today morning just now on a one of the yeah, yeah. he uh, says d6 occupancy mall. yeah so what is Yes. sir yeah. it is not a d6 occupancy it's a mercantile or assembly is categorized as 2000 square meter so the 2000 square meter is the compartmentation planning to be done there is Francis a compartmentation requirement for the see if you are talking about mall it is a mixed occupancy basically you have th- uh, malls uh, means uh, mercantile activity assembly in the theaters then there are food courts available so depending upon the segregation of mixed occupancy yeah that also you have to uh, segregate with the four hours fire resistance and the internal yeah. compartmentation both the things you have to uh, yeah. see uh, but varik sir as prasanna rightly said whether you take it as an assembly or a mercantile in both cases the limit is 2000 square meter yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. so there is no, no problem there is no ambiguity on that so design that particularly 2000 square meter as a compartment full stop <laughs> Stop. Go ahead. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, Nitin is asking. I am still not very clear on this question. Most of the hotels having a challenges, challenge of mechanical and electrical compartment. Please put some focus on it. Mechanical electrical compartment. What is it? Yeah, most of the hotels having a challenges of mechanical electrical <laughs> compartment. I don't know what the question is. He is asking. Is there any guidelines for uh, uh, compartmentation by electrical or me- mechanical? I don't know. Unless he is talking of uh, where your electrical substation, your transformer, generating set, and uh, other related uh, component, you have to take care of uh, the uh, uh, emergency power. Where your emergency power backup requirements on that, there is a requirement of a larger uh, size emergency power requires compartmentation. That's also covered in the electrical installation chapter uh, separately. And what type of Installation needed to take care of the electrical fire that has got to be separately brought out. But yeah, I do agree. That's a concentrated uh, load coming on where all this particular hub will be there in the whole building. The heart of the building will be where from where generation and distribution will take place. And of course, some of those uh, details which uh, Varik has given, as well as the uh, Prasanna has given, where all these conduits and other related things that go into building, which are electrical uh, uh, installation one. Uh, they should have the right level of protection in terms of the nature of cable and other related one of course what you require for transformer genset etc are details already available there would you like to add something more sir varik sir <laughs> maybe he is talking about uh, means air handling units and that uh, that uh, i try i just talked about air handling unit yeah, yeah. in my presentation briefly yes, uh, that's yes. why i did not repeat that electrical we didn't touch so we thought we'll cover that 
we are having distinguished presence of mr bhavani prasad himself who is the chairman of uh, the uh, electrical installation of the nbc uh, i think he really touched about <laughs> the last time on some of these concerns on wherever you have uh, these type of installations are there uh, fortunately there are clarity absolute clarity of provisions available in the code all you have to do is get into the particular provisions on that Okay, sir. Uh, Vinay Deshman again. A uh, lot of questions. I'm going to take last question of his, but uh, more relevant is asking: Is any qualification requirement for uh, now being a fire consultant? So who can be very a fire good. consultant? <laughs> I think this is a very important point. And that is the last point in my keynote. Unfortunately, Vari Kasulas president did not touch over. This is a real matter. How do you deal with this particular component of dealing with the uh, issue on? Uh, i just told architects engineers structural engineers mep of mechanical electrical plumbing and fire fighting f is a fire fighting one who has got to give you detailed advice regarding this particular one on that uh, the qualification institution of fire engineers as well as the degree available from the national fire service college and details are available uh, since maharashtra is one state where they started the work on uh, accreditation of people to deal with the compliance mm -hmm. on that would the varik like to open out on that a little more there are two features uh, we uh, in the uh, maharashtra fire prevention and life safety measures act like 2006 we have the provisions of license agency so there are three types of license what we issue one is for the water based systems that is hydrant sprinklers second is electrical ones that is manual call point detection systems and all that and third is the passive one passive fire protection so three types of license are available depending upon the uh, turnover of that company that is financial capability number of cases they have handled based upon that uh, these uh, things are uh, issued but he is talking about the audit and the fire protection engineer as a certified uh, thing i don't think that particular uh, means uh, force is there now mr uh, farad was the government of india with uh, i think some uh, uh, university they have started a diploma course uh, and degree also degree also yeah, yeah. so that is a new development but uh, no other fire act or the uh, fire services they are approving as a fire uh, consultant or the fire protection an auditor yeah yeah auditor. possibly possibly the next version of the nbc 2000 nbc when comes over the amendment whatever these details will be gone because even on this on the qualifications of all these professionals be it an architect or engineer or structural engineer town planner uh, urban designer landscape architect etc etc for all this mechanical electrical plumbing and fire fighting one the concerned institutional bodies have certain amount of norms to deal with that so the nbc in the 2016 version also talks about that in the forward for part 2 of the nbc really covers including the appendix a uh, because there was certain amount of lack of clarity at that point of time somewhere around 2015 uh, and the courses which uh, warik just now mentioned at the degree level as well as uh, the diploma level including the national fire service college the type of output coming on that so there was a little amount of uh, best practice based on current practice being followed now but over a period of time i'm sure by the time the next one comes you will have absolute clarity like the civil engineers the mechanical engineers the uh, electrical engineers the air conditioning engineers the public health engineers you will also have clarity on the fire protection engineers also what should be the minimum qualification required for you to do that that will that will emerge out at present we are aware of certain amount of norms being done uh, which are there which has got little amount of it's not exactly black and white little gray area it's coming at this particular point of time but that will also get according to me focused and clarified uh, in the next one or two years time so the very important question uh, from praveen pawar on this story uh, go down basically is asking is it necessary to have a compartment in two different storage area in an industry example yeah, total yeah. area 4000 square meter two yes. storage area one with rack another with pallet so is it mandatory by courts that these two areas should have separate separation wall in between and sprinklers are provided in both area yes it is required sprinklers are required because it says uh, means uh, if you go through the provisions of compartmentation 
for storage <coughs> requirement is 750 square meter only if you provide the sprinklers you can extend it up to 2250 square meter if the floor plate is 4000 square meters then definitely it should be get divided into a two compartments and do karna hi hai do karna hai rack rack storages and the pallet so if it is a rack then there is a requirement of rack sprinklers also if the height is more than 4.5 meters rack height is going more than 4.5 meters you have to provide the rack sprinklers also rack and sprinklers if the only pallet is there at ground level storages then it can protect with the above ground and it depends upon the how means k factor of the sprinklers will also differ depending upon what you are storing whether it is stored in only pallets whether it is in the corrugated boxes or whether it is in the plastic boxes so depending upon the type of material and how it is stored with which packing so that also makes a difference okay sir uh, let's move to uh, uh, ganesh uh, what is the maximum per permissible evacuation time from topmost floor or farthest point to designated fire assembly space, uh, space in case of fire accident so current nbc has done away with this previously we used to say uh, evacuation time 3 minutes 2 and 1/2 minutes and 2 minutes depending upon type of construction okay. now if you are talking about a high rise building of 100 meters having 30 33 floors it is not possible to evacuate within the 2 minutes or 3 minutes so it is the time uh, actually required from the your farthest point it is a travel distance from your go ahead i think uh, is loss of signal so uh, i think we lost him uh, i think uh, i think warig has built on it uh, right way and therefore up to a safe area the idea is that you got to take them from the farthest point through the travel distance component through the uh, doors including the corridors up to a safe area like a fire tower or some area it cannot be at the lowest most for the point there and that's where the component like fire the tower has been brought in over there in the nbc 2016 version so i think it's a uh, what uh, got connected yeah, yeah. Uh, so it is a comparative safety uh, part of a thing which on the horizontal evacuation you can say or you, if you are reaching on the refuge area it is a comparatively safety or if you are in the fire tower where it is pressurized yeah, i i mentioned about fire tower just now yeah so these are the places or uh, these are the comparative safety on the floor and once you come out in on the ground open to sky that is ultimate safety from the fire so you have to it means you how much time you if it is a, a physically challenged person he can be wake which is pressurized uh, from the uh, 33 or 100 or above 100 meter building if it is a normal evacuation that may take 10 minutes or 15 minutes also for it is a, a seven story structure so now the time is has gone only you have to ensure that you should have the if you take uh, you talking about burj khalifa it is <laughs> 1000 meter height you cannot have the evacuation time within 10 minutes or so so it is not possible that criteria has gone you have to see that the by implementing passive fire protection you have to give them a sufficient in, enhanced time for evacuation on the floor or through the fire tower you can reach at uh, ultimate safety fire, fire tower water. yeah yeah if we if i may clarify since uh, varik has mentioned about people uh, handicapped and disadvantaged and all that hospital building so classic case wherein previously there was a limit of only not you talk 100 meters you can't do all that you had a limit of up to 30 meters there but nbc 2016 has brought in that you can make uh, the healthcare building up to 45 meters that's a maximum permitted with a proviso that in the first 30 meters one all the people who are in the icu who are in the operation who are in the whose physical movements are restricted who might be in a, a coma stage or other related stage they should be in the lower 30 meters height or the top 15 meters can be where active activities can take place there so the biggest thing is how to take them from the farthest place to bring on each one of the floor to a safe level either to the refuge area or to a fire tower 
from which the further evacuation takes place. But in as much as the, we are in a era of getting into more tall buildings over there, even though we are covered even up 200 meters, possibility of the lifts can never be at any point of time utilized for evacuation. But in the case of fire, don't use lift was a standard particular way it's covered. Even now that's a provision. But the situation is now that even the fireman's lift is provided for their movement to go up and down there. There is a possibility all over the world, including when tall buildings are coming, including fire evacuation lift for higher stories could also be coming very shortly. So these are all the new changes which are emerging, which of course require very robust conditions that that itself should not be uh, dug through which the fire can spread. I mean, all the concern areas are covered. So escapes only through staircases, escapes only through ramps, you require so much amount of time. But this time is between each of the floor that you can come in about the time period, which is three minutes time, uh, go based on which all the exit widths of the staircases, all your corridor widths, all the door widths, etc. are calculated for evacuating the people, including travel distance, uh, etc. are covered in the code. We leave it at that. Yeah, let's move on to this question from Mary Ann Bezosa. What is the ratio of opening like windows, etc.? According to a floor area of the building, how many windows can be provided for a room of six by seven meters in a compartment system? Number of windows that is required. Is there any guideline on that? Yeah. Talking about Normally, uh, depending upon the, uh, the building bylaws and course in part three talks in terms of the a area of a window required for a room normally, and that depends on the hot, arid region and hot, humid region. That's primarily from the point of lighting and ventilation point of view. And I said, as I said, if you're going to have the uh, glass related particular building coming, there's what is called a window to wall ratio, uh, which is indicated wherein the, uh, the, uh, the glass related window cannot be more than of the order of they're given a percentage there. At the same time, a minimum 10% openable condition is put over there, which is again from fire safety point of view. I think these part three requirements and part four requirements and part six, uh, section eight, together, if you read together, you will get an idea, especially on window and openable areas point of view. One is the minimum from lighting and ventilation and air change point of view. Of course, you can make it a bit, it's a natural, you can get artificial also brought in. But even there, your, your requirements to ensure that the uh, the safety of the people have to be taken into account. So we are uh, now one 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 ten p.m. I I think we are running out of time. Still, we have around fifty six questions to answer. So what I will do? I'll just pick up three questions out of this. Then later I'll forward this question to the uh, you know speakers. Uh, they will email it to you at their convenient time. But I'll pick up one or two questions now. Sorry, three questions. So this question from Rajesh. Shirke of Mumbai, what is the best? What is the best maintenance and testing practice for fire dampers? Is there any IS codes for maintenance and testing? Fire dampers. I don't think any no. standard is there for. There's no IS codes or uh, maintenance and testing on dampers. We'll check up and get back. Yes. Mr. Prasanna Kumar can, if... Yeah, that's what the voice, testing, uh, sir, for the testing of dampers, the IS codes are there. Uh, I mean, the uh, the liquid IS codes, we can brief them. What is that? Under maintenance, there is no IS code. For testing, yes, there is an IS code for the dampers. We do, uh, in the whenever the installation happens, the testing of dampers are done as per the IS codes. We will get back only, to them on the numbers, sir. Which... But the only thing we can supplement to Prasanna Kumar's uh, answer is that the NBC has got a new part 12. Many may not know the first building code in the world, even now, which has brought in a thing called assets and facility management. Normally, as, as mm -hmm. long as you get an, a completion certificate given an occupant certificate is over, the architect is gone, the engineer is gone, the builder is gone, everybody is gone. Then you have, the building is looked after by resident welfare society or by the apartment owners association or building owners association. The part 12 brings a very important aspect that the safety becomes very, very important. That is the structural safety, fire safety, health safety, life safety, public safety, all these safeties are important. So therefore keeping in view all these factors, the building code, has, the buildings have to perform. It is not 
that what you do for getting the clearance, you got it cleared. But how, what will happen to a building one year down the line, two years down the line, five years down the line? How does all this perform is an important one. And it has got one particular section in Part 12 to deal with firefighting installations, etc. A checklist is there to see whether your sprinklers are working, detectors are working, your alarm systems are working, water is available, dampers are working, etc. And therefore, whatever periodic maintenance cycle should be there is covered in that. Normally, the assets and facility management company, if it's separate companies dealing with that, or if you're dealing with an annual maintenance contract with any firefighting installation company, they'll have to put this particular requirement of well, what should be the particular time. But very necessary that when the fire day, the damper should work. So therefore, continuous 24 by 7, zero tolerance, uh, I, these are all zero tolerance item, very, very importantly. Although there's no many say, I put a damper, it doesn't work when the fire takes place. No good. So therefore, we've got to really get in along with this particular uh, uh, installation agencies, but if the court does not have the particular things, as Prasanna says, I'm sure it's an area into which the requirement can come. Because if we, in a building over there, you have structural, non-structural, finishing and services installation. Each of the different type of guarantees and life period there. So we got to see from that point of view, your particular installation, maybe part 12 of the NBC, the checklist, we'll have to go through in minute detail where dampers are covered. If so, how to cover that? Sir, let's go to the consultant from Dubai is asking a simple question. What is a fire tower? So to Prasanna, uh, what is fire tower? The fire tower was earlier also in the National Building Code 2000. The fire tower is a staircase and a combination of a fireman's lift with well-protected or pressurized area where he has an access to the fire hose reel and then a two-way talkback system for him to communicate. It's basically used by the fireman for the evacuation purpose. It's a dedicated a grouping of the uh, grouping of the I'm thing. And uh, presently in NBC 2016, they're given a typical sketch also. How should be the, the uh, fire tower should look like? Sir, over to Raman Kapoor again. Uh, how to yeah, compartment yeah. assembly building like exhibition hall, conference hall that have very high ceiling, like 12 meters and above. Very important question, sir. Actually, I told you I'm in a webinar. Prasanna, you, can you take this question uh, for the assembly yeah, area, yeah, like exhibition and conference hall, or a marriage sir, hall, which has a high ceiling? Sir, the year, there's a passive uh, fire protection will help. You need to have the curtains here. So as per the assembly areas, uh, every 2,000 square meter, we can plan for an uh, fire curtains here which gets activated by the uh, detectors or the beam detectors, the fire alarm system, these fire curtains can be planned. But yes, these fire curtains, when we plan, initially design should have the evacuation plan also. For every 2,000 square meter, there should be an access for the person to get evacuated from the compartmented area, the contained area. So uh, the fire curtains are the only one which can be done here. The only availability of in the market is an issue because the 12 meter, we don't have the fire curtains availability. Uh, the depth of the fire curtains are not available for that area. So that is a challenging here. Otherwise, the building, the walls will not have any solution for any assembly areas. It is a passive fire protection only to be done. Okay, sir. Let's uh, move to uh, the question from uh, Mr. Dhananjay. Can you use triangular staircase for fire exit? Um, you mean the plan? Working. The plan. The plan is being triangular one. Yes. Uh, his question is very simple. Why not? Uh, sorry. Uh, can we use triangular staircase for fire exit? Sir, we have no, used actually, a, we have used circular staircase uh, for the fire staircase. I think the width is more important yeah. according to uh, my yeah. understanding. According to my no, understanding, circular staircase also only can limit up to nine meters. Yes, yeah. nine meters. I think I think the yes. important component is you should have uninterrupted the width of the particular staircase which is coming, wherein the movement cannot be restricted, not more than twelve steps in each of the uh, flight uh, length coming with a break coming. And if you are able to ensure the width of the thing coming, whether it is going to be pentagon or rectangular or octagon, that particular staircase configuration, 
I think the most important or a dog leg which is mostly rectangular all depends upon are you able to have a continuous width of the particular movement for them to evacuate and you don't have more than about 12 steps in each of the particular uh, this one and you have a break after they're coming. I think it should be fine functionally. We shouldn't have, there shouldn't be any difficulty. It's all a matter of, only thing is you kind of skew the first type of situations from where the evacuation becomes difficult. Most important thing is people should be able to move in the proper way in a ease where one behind the other when the evacuation time, how they are able to perform well becomes the most important aspect on that. I don't know whether he has got a situation where a triangular staircase is to be put and local body says you can't put that. I don't know what is the concern at this point of time. But according to me, if the minimum width of the staircase can be maintained throughout the traverse in whichever uh, formation of uh, the space, rectangle or square or uh, uh, triangle or circular pentagon can come, I think it should be possible. So the last question of the day from Sujan Nohan. Is there any kind of compartmentalization method available for explosion hazard occupants in NBC? Explosion hazard. Clarified by Warik Sab already, but again, let him take it. Explosion Warik, hazard. See, there are there are different standards available. Indian standards are there. How to handle the explosion? And uh, explosions means there are uh, explosives uh, act is there. And there are provisions given in the rules also. So you have to go as per that. Uh, means whatever building construction is there, then compartmentalization, you have to go as per that. NBC is not governing uh, this uh, uh, low hazard, moderate hazard, industrial, and hazardous activities. So uh, there is no directly uh, Provisions in the NBC for the. I think uh, we lost uh, you. Um, I think so you have to probably go the, the power failure is connected on the uh, data. Uh, I have still a lot of questions to ask. What I'll do is uh, uh, we will try and answer over email. I'll pick up this question and give it to the speakers. So, as I said earlier, at their convenient time, they will try and answer your questions. So, we are now 120 now. Uh, you know, this has taken almost two and a half hours. I cannot prolong on this. Lunch time, people are hungry and angry to close this session as quickly as possible. I must thank uh, Mr. V. Suresh, the most energetic person in this uh, in, in the forum. And I thank Mr. Prasanna Kumar, wonderful, your uh, you know, yes. wonderful uh, insight on your PPT. And uh, most humble person I have seen in the fire <laughs> field, Mr. Santosh Warik, you know, always say, say yes to anything. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure we could touch little things, not everything. Somewhere, you know, we could have, we, I think we addressed few questions and we, we clarity, give a lot of clarity on compartmental spaces. Uh, there are a lot of suggestions coming on my WhatsApp, an email, certain but questions being asked, a lot of suggestions. Yeah. Dominic, Dominic, I want to congratulate you for taking a very difficult topic. This particular topic has never been taken up so far in any of the webinars or even big conferences by any of the agency. It's a difficult area, a very sensitive area, and a very important area. And I am very happy on a topic like that. You've been able to identify large amount of points of view on that. Maybe this could be a very major which can be taken forward to cover specifically for some of the application area in the more details in the light of all the questions which has come. So we want to congratulate you for the initiative. Okay. Thank you. Thank you most, so much, sir. A lot of suggestion on the staircase preservation. Uh, preservation. So there is somebody, why can't we have a dedicated webinar on staircase preservation? Why so we, we learn from this. So every webinar is a great learning for me. Uh, it's just a passion that is leading me to organize this such a webinar. No product promotion, nothing. But it's a knowledge that we have been sharing. I welcome all the participants to participate in this upcoming next Saturday. A uh, very interesting on the digital transformation. Uh, okay, we have been speaking on the life safety and this is something about technology. How you connect with people? How you connect your business? How you connect your people around through your smartphone? It will be by uh, Jairam next week. Please do join. Once again, thank you all the audience, all the participants. Thank you the panelists. Thank you thank once you. again. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dominic. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Dominic. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir
Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Wonderful Thank uh, you. getting associated with you. Brilliant presentation you. by Santosh and uh, Prasanna, adding so much value. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The yeah, presentation can be loaded. For those who have participated, the presentation can be shared. Yes, sir. No, no problem. Given, I will put it on PDF format and uh, yeah. with the permission yeah. of the. Only for PDF uh, format, sir. not editable yeah. format, only PDF format. Yes, sir. No, no problem, sir. You can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dom. Thank you.